Hello anatomy lovers, now that you've decided to learn its anatomy, you may find that the skull is scarier than you thought. You will see that there are many, many structures to identify or even details related to the bones of the skull that are important to know. But stay tuned. At the end of this tutorial, we will reveal a tool to help you memorize all the bones of the skull and their locations. Bones of the skull. The skull forms the skeleton of the head. Even though it looks like one bone, the skull actually consists of 22 bones, ossa capitis, or 29, including the inner ear bones, the auditory ossicles, ossicular auditus, and hyoid bone. The mandible and the hyoid bone are technically not considered as part of the cranium and thus are sometimes referred to as extracranial bones. On the skull we distinguish two main compartments. The brain case, neurocranium, and the facial skeleton, splanchnocranium, viscerocranium. The brain case forms a protective sheath around the brain and sensory organs. The inside of the brain case forms the cranial cavity, cavum crani. The facial skeleton surrounds the beginning of the digestive cavity and the respiratory tract. Greek word splanchna indicates entrails. The bones of this part of the skull determine our individual appearance and form the support for the masticatory and facial muscles. The individual bones of the skull are mostly connected together by fibrous joints, so-called sutures, suturi. The exception is the mandible, mandible, which is connected to the skull by a joint, articulatio. The brain case, neurocranium, is made up of eight bones which include anterior to posterior, the frontal bone, os frontale, the ethmoid bone, os ethmoidale, the sphenoid bone, two parietal bones, ossa parietalia, two temporal bones, ossa temporalia, and the occipital bone, os occipitale. Its primary function is the protection of the brain. The brain is almost entirely enclosed by the neurocranium with the exception of the foramen magnum and other. Foramina at the skull base which serve as entry and exit point for blood vessels and cranial nerves. The facial skeleton, viscerocranium, is made up of 13 bones which include two nasal bone S, ossa nasalia, two zygomatic bone S, ossa zygomatica, two maxilla bone, two palatine bones, ossa palatina, two lacrimal bones, ossa lacrimalia, two inferior nasal conchas, conchi nacelles inferiores, and the voma. Finally, we have the mandibula, lower jaw, which is technically not part of the viscerocranium, however is sometimes still counted as such by some texts. Also, we should mention the three ossicili auditus of the middle ear. Its main task is the protection and support for all of the facial structures. Components Anterior, frontal, view. The frontal bone is found superiorly while the mandible lies inferiorly, giving the skull an ovoid shape when looked at anteriorly. The frontal bone underlies the forehead. Above the orbital cavities, the nasal bridge, which is formed jointly by the two nasal bones, and the frontal process of the zygomatic bone. The maxilla occupies most of the space in the middle part of the facial skeleton. Together with the nasal bones, they form the boundaries of the anterior nasal aperture. Inferiorly, the mandible and the alveolar processes of the maxilla form the lower part of the anterior skull. Lateral, side, view. The lateral aspect of the skull can be divided into three regions. The facial region, the temporal region and the occipital region. Posterior view.
The posterior aspect of the skull is formed by the parietal bone supralaterally, the temporal bone inferolateral, and the occipital bone centrally. Sometimes this view of the skull is referred to as the occipital view. Superior view. From above, we can see the ellipsoid-shaped part of the skull called the calvaria. It is formed by four bones, the frontal bone, the two parietal bones, and the occipital bone. These bones articulate through three sutures, the coronal suture, between the frontal and parietal bones. The lambdoid suture, between the occipital and parietal bones and the sagittal suture, between the two parietal bones. Base of the skull, inferior view. The base of the skull extends from the superior nuchal lines of the occipital bones posteriorly to the upper incisors teeth anteriorly. This aspect of the skull contains a lot of important structures, including the largest skull foramen, the foramen magnum. We can divide this part of the skull into five, to make it easier to study. Anterior part, the hard palate and the upper jaw. Middle part, the sphenoid bone, petrous processes of the temporal bones, and the basilar part of the occipital bone. Lateral parts, the zygomatic arches, mandibular fossae, tympanic plates and the styloid and mastoid processes. Posterior part, the occipital bone. Sutures. The most important sutures in the human skull are the coronal suture, between the frontal and parietal bone, the sagittal suture, dividing both the parietal bones. The lambdoidal suture, running horizontally between the occipital bone and both parietal bones. These are the three most significant of all 33 sutures which are formed by the human skull bones. Foramina and contents. Most foramina in which relevant nerves and blood vessels pass through are located at the base of the skull. In the following, the most important structures are discussed ordered by their location in the three cranial fossae. Anterior cranial fossa. The anterior cranial fossa comprises a holy plate at the center, the so-called cribriform plate, lamina cribrosa. The approximately 20 cribriform foramina serve as a passageway for the olfactory nerves to the olfactory mucosa in the nasal cavity. Both the optic nerve and the ophthalmic artery pass through the optic canal which is centrally located on the sphenoid bone. The lesser wing of the sphenoid bone, ala minor, forms the dorsal boundary of the anterior cranial fossa. Middle cranial fossa. The middle cranial fossa lies slightly deeper than the anterior cranial fossa. The superior orbital fissure which is bounded by the greater and lesser wings of the sphenoid bone contains the trochlear nerve, abducens nerve, oculomotor nerve and ophthalmic nerve. The cella tersica is a depression in the sphenoid bone. In the center of the middle cranial fossa it forms the pituitary fossa in which the pituitary gland sits. Further important foramina are the foramen rotundum, maxillary nerve, foramen oval, mandibular nerve, carotid canal, internal carotid artery. Posterior cranial fossa. The largest opening in the skull is the foramen magnum. Here the brain stem leaves the skull and becomes the spinal cord. The foramen magnum is situated in the center of the posterior cranial fossa. It is separated from the middle cranial fossa by the dorsum salae and the upper edge of the petrous bone. Further important structures are the internal acoustic meters, facial nerve, vestibulocochlear nerve, jugular foramen, internal jugular vein, glossopharyngeal nerve, vagus nerve, accessory nerve.
hyperglossal canal, hyperglossal nerve. And that's it for today. But before we finish, let's review some of what we learned today. Review. So first there is the promised aid for easy memorization of skull bones. The arrangement of the bones on the skull is easier to remember when you realize that the cranial bones are arranged in two circles. One runs around the skull from top to bottom and the other from right to left. Within these circles, the bones are repeated over and over again. Repeat them a few times, preferably with a skull in your hand, and see how easy they are to remember. The only exception is the hyoid bone, a bone located in the neck muscle between the base of the mouth and the larynx, which is not directly connected to any cranial bones and is therefore often absent from skull models. Let's start with os frontale, then we can go down to os nasal, then maxilla, mandibula, then posteriorly to os palatinum, next voma and os ethmoidale, os sphenoidale, os occipitale, then os parietale and again os frontale and so on and so forth. The second circle we can start with os nasal, then we go laterally to os lacrimale, os zygomaticum, os temporal, then os occipital from the back of the head and again temporal. Zygomaticum, lacrimale and back to os nasal and so on and so forth. Now you'll remember the skull bones forever. Next we will talk about the sutures. We mentioned the coronal suture, the sagittal suture, and the lambdoid suture. Then we talk about the cranial foramina and the main structures located in the three cranial fossae. Most of these are nerves and blood vessels. And here's a brief summary of the various openings and the structures that run through them. Foramina summary. And also a short summary of the skull. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed learning about the skull. To make sure you don't miss the next videos, don't forget to subscribe. And please give us a like. Have a nice day with your skull.